Okay, everybody, this is Grant from Spark, and I am super pumped to have Wonder here, Jessica and Tiffany here, and we've been interacting, gosh, since the beginning, actually. Yeah. Since the beginning, we've been talking since the beginning at the collective, actually. I, I didn't even think about it. It's like, you know, I don't know if you guys are saying this right now, but me and Marissa were just saying this morning, like, it's been a really long month this week, really? <laughs> you know? And then I think about how long you guys have been in business, and it's similar. Like, you guys have been doing Wonder here. Uh, for decades. And it's like, no, right. no, it's just been a little while. So real quick to everyone, Jessica and Tiffany were both teachers in the school system. And as many teachers do, you know, that their boots on the ground and they're, you know, on the front lines of education, they see the pros and cons of where education was going, where public education was going. And so they just had a seed of something that was like, we want to start a learn and play studio. I, I remember Tiffany, that was big for you. Like, no, it's a learn and play studio. And I remember some of the, <laughs> the, some of the it's not a school. Some of the original diagrams and stuff were awesome, <laughs> but it evolved. And um, it evolved into what is Wonder Here. And it's still a learn and play studio, but it's nuanced, right? And what you guys have been doing. So for the audience, so that I don't butcher it, give us a summary of like where Wonder Here, this is to either of you, where Wonder Here has been going before Corona and then how you're having to adapt. So I don't know how you guys want to tackle that, whether it's Jessica or Tiffany, I don't know how you want to tackle that, but okay. where, has been, where has Wonder Here been going? Yeah, I mean, before Wonder Here started, we knew we wanted to do something different. Um, we have a physical space where our students meet. Um, we do a lot of really engaging hands-on classes and activities. We have kind of adapted. We do actually have a school now. Yeah. <laughs> inside of our Learn and Play studio, which we're really proud of. Um, but it still just keeps all, it keeps our philosophy in line. So our kids play, they interact, um, they do a lot of projects. I mean, it's very independent, so it's not very full group. Um, and then now that everyone ha is required to be home, our students are also home, but the pivot was actually pretty easy for us. We, I'm kind of surprised at how quickly our team kind it of- It was jumped. easy. It was, because we were already <laughs> doing a lot of it. Um, we, the biggest problem, I think, for us is we, we've lost our ability to be in community in person. Oh, um, yeah. That's a huge part of what Wonder Here does. But everything else, the activities, the way that we learn, the style, they were able to transition because our kids were largely in charge of it in a way. So they were largely in charge of how they ran their day so they could do it mm. at home. Um, and then we use Zoom. Now we get to do that. And that helps us to bridge the gap with our communication so our kids get to see each other every day. They get to talk every day. Um, so those are really fun. Those are like big meetings and powwows. But, um, but yeah, but a lot of the stuff we were doing, we had online. So we were able to pull stuff online and just provide it for the home and just print it out. You already um, had your courseware and stuff online. We had the curriculum. We have curriculum online. Um, but we didn't have, we never recorded video. So that has been a new thing for us having to be on camera and be live. Um, but we're getting really good at it. I hope. <laughs> yeah, man. Now, now is it the two of you or are your instructors the ones mostly doing the courses and the recording or is that the two of you? It's all hands on deck really. So yeah. Tiffany and I, and then our studio director, Amanda, are trying to lead the charge with the team. Um, but the team is so, so hands-on. They um, meet with their classes every day that their classes would normally be in session at Wonder Here. They do like a whole group kind of powwow where really the kids get to just check in. And we always do in class, we do like highs and lows because that's just a big part of the community. Like the kids, yeah. at the end of the day, they want to be able to express like how they're feeling, what's going well, what's not. Mm. Um, the teachers are recording read aloud. They're reading chapter books and we have a big Google Drive folder that we're organizing everything in. Um, and read yeah. Read alouds. So Tell me what read alouds is. A read aloud is when you just read a book aloud. Um, and so it, it's a, just a basic tenant of what we do at Wonder Here. Mm. Um, teachers read to their students every day. Um, and so it's cool to keep that routine going. And so a big thing that we keep saying in this shift is um, to our families is that we want to return to routine in your household. Oh. And that we want to equip you to do that because we know that parents are still having to juggle their jobs, which are now remote, or maybe perhaps they are, you know, one of the essential ones who are still going out. And so they still have a huge load to carry. And so how mm. can we keep that burden without, um, you know, 
the cost of losing the wonder here vision at home. So now, that's just been a big conversation between us. Now, yeah. what struck me here is that a lot of parents, well, the handful of parents I know that now have their kids at home, they're expressing like mortification of like what to do. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think most of their students <clears throat> were either in public school or pre-K or something like that. Um, not in something as niche or nuanced or caring as wonder here per se. And your focus on community, I, I love that, that you, I have already, already identified that was the biggest challenge to, to overcome. Now mm -hmm. you mentioned though, Tiffany, that your students guide their learning day. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the parents that are mortified of doing this at home learning or distance learning, are, are you finding that parents are like over, um, are trying to impose themselves too much, whereas the students would have led themselves anyway? Yeah, I, I think that has probably been the biggest worry for a lot of parents um, that aren't a part of our community because they're just not used to it. Mm. Um, is that question, well, my kids were supposed to be in school for seven and three quarter hour days. <laughs> I have to provide seven and three quarter hours of mm. covering and babysitting <laughs> with my children every day while managing my own workload. Mm. Um, and that's, you know, in a regular school day, I know the teacher does spend a large amount of time in a traditional school setting. I'm kind of like the talking head. They spend a lot of time talking, a lot of time leading the, dis the discussion. Mm. Um, but at our studio, our students are probably run most of the time. We like wow. to say our classrooms work, if our classrooms are running the way they're supposed to, we could step out of the picture and they wouldn't miss a beat. Wow. Um, and that's kind of how it is. So our parents, we, we have a lot of routines that we put in place that we've just carried home so that the kids still can wake up in the morning and the parent doesn't really have to do much. They just um, set the table, give them the stuff, and the kids really can run their morning and then we'll jump on wow. the in midday. Um, but that's why we created, we did like a teachable. Yeah. Um, so we made like this online course so that we could empower parents with these routines, even if you're not used to doing Wonder Here. Yeah. We wanted to be able to say, here are our routines you can do that will give your child independence oh, wow. so that they can run their day and do their work without you having to facilitate everything. So if a family is not a Wonder Here client or community member, you have some courses for them. Yes. Yeah, we put it online for free. Oh, wow. Now, see, that's really good. And then I was going to ask this. So like, you, like, it really is like a tribal thing you have to in, um, enculturate to have a group of young people lead their own learning day, especially if there's any community components. So as you have, well, I guess I should ask, have you had any new students come in under Corona self-quarantine? And if so, how do they get used to that? We haven't had any new students enroll into our studio during this time. Okay. But we, because um, we have different audiences with you know, our different programs and things like that. So our famous who are enrolled into our regular programs, like full day and half day classes are getting a lot of support through all of these things that we are giving. Um, but we also do what's called enrichment classes. Mm. At one and those are for families traditionally before all of this, who were homeschooling, who just wanted to take a couple classes here and there, um, kind of like a flexible schedule kind of thing. Um, so we wanted to continue to provide something like that. And we're in the middle of a three week course now. It's two, we're offering two different online courses for young kids. And it's really just through zoom. And it's like, if you're not a part of our like community community, but you still want to do stuff that's hands on led by a teacher, really fun topics. And then we actually created kits and delivered them mm. out to people, um, really? to help supplement these classes. So right now we're um, in week one of a three week course. And then we're kind of just trying to take it as it goes. We might have to do another round. Um, and we would be happy to get ideas. Yeah. For what it um, <laughs> Now yeah. I, I know you, I know the two of you and well, I know you loosely and over the years you have talked about delivering, uh, maybe not in this way, but this vein of content for a little while now. Right. Yeah. Like it was like it was already stewing like, well, we're going to start rolling out tools and we're going to start rolling out curriculum and mm -hmm. uh, and really empower distance learning because we think we can do it a little bit better. Um, how has it been like stepping in onto the business owner hat? Like, how has this been for you to make some of these adjustments in transitions uh, in such a compressed time frame? Like that has been difficult. Yeah, I 
think I am kind of surprised at kind of the ease of some of the, some of the platforms online. Yeah. We have kind of taught, we've talked about being online for a while. Um, but it's really, we love our Lakeland community, you know, Lakeland, there's just no place kind of like it. Yeah. So everyone kind of rallies around a small business, but for us to be online is kind of, a, you know, that's like the wild west. So we <laughs> haven't, we haven't really tried, but now that we've been required to, I think I'm amazed at how much, how much, um, content we've been able to put online kind of quickly yeah. and how well it's being received. We even gave, so we've created curriculum. We've had, we've had curriculum online for a while, but we really haven't been able to push it very well because we don't, we're just not very good at it. Yeah. Um, but we have seen curriculum flying off yeah. of our website now, all of a sudden, just because so, such a new audience of everyone is yeah. needing the things that we are, we've been offering. Um, so it's been neat, but yeah, I think for sure we're going to have to keep when everything settles down prayerfully soon, yeah, we'll have to for sure keep these videos and we're gonna have to keep this thing going online. And do you think like, and we were talking about this a little bit off camera, but do you think the, the technological advancements, the remote learning, the distance learning that you're providing and others are providing and really that parents are going, oh wow, we really could do distance learning. Do you, th how much of that do you think will stick around after life gets back to normal, whatever new yeah. normal is? I keep seeing like things like that, like we'll never get back to normal the sure. way that we thought it was. And so I think what I take that to mean is that, yeah, some of these things that we're learning have to problem solve through. And even Tiffany and I, like she was saying for so many years, we're like, oh, we just don't want to get in front of the camera. Like that's too much. And now it's like, <laughs> oh, this is, we have no choice. And it no. isn't as we thought, you know, but I think it does give like a new avenue to parents and families to be able to still engage. I know like, for example, even with our, like, little pop-in classes we do here and there, sometimes parents were, like, hesitant to commit because it is hard to get yeah. out of the house with children, especially multiple children, and you just never know. Children are unpredictable, and so they just may not be up for it one day. So yeah. offering different avenues of learning, um, I think that distance learning via, like, technology has gotten a stigma of, like, oh, my kid's just going to be, like, zoned into the screen all day and it kind of has this negative feel to it but it doesn't have to be that way even mm. with our online courses um there's a lot of hands-on things happening but there's a teacher there remotely to help guide the conversation yeah. and to lead the parent and lead the child um so i definitely think that this this is going to stick around for a while i really think you two have have just added additional uh, pillars to the business, honestly, and some that you might have taken another six to 12 months before you even really tackled, in all right. honesty. <laughs> now, I mean, there is the financial slump, and, and that's scary. Um, so, I mean, talk to me real quick, because I know that you have a team, and I don't often get, a lot of my conversations are with one or two person teams, and you have a team. So, how are you managing team, team morale? Um, how are you trying to navigate that right now? Yeah, we do have a team. Our team's kind of big. We, we probably are a team of about 15. Wow. Um, all women, powerful women, <laughs> um, but 15 <laughs> people that we are in really constant communication with. Yeah. We, we really, um, I think because it, Jessica and I, we do a lot of the idea casting, but they, mm -hmm. these women have just brilliant ideas all on their own, and they are just very passionate yeah. about what we are doing. And so as soon as everything happened, everyone was problem solving. Everyone had ideas. Wow. Everyone was willing to jump in. Um, and that has really made all the difference. We do, we do group calls. We do zoom calls. We do have a big running text message, um, thread that we all have literally uh, just through text, like not Slack yeah. or anything. No, we have well, just a big text message thread <laughs> that we have. Um, and so we have been really just trying and trying to encourage one another. And then we use our Google Drive where everyone posts their classrooms. Um, so everyone gets an opportunity to see each other. They can take feedback and get um, ideas on how everyone else is running mm. their different programs. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so it's been really helpful. And I, I think it's really cool because our, our entire community with our parents and everyone, everyone who's kind of bought into the idea of Wonder Here. Yeah. And our teachers included that, you know, we consider our parents a part of our team. Yeah. Um, everyone has really rallied around us which has been so encouraging we have started doing monday big zoom calls and we call them state of the studio address <laughs> so our state of the studio addresses are on mondays and we I just like that. 
Yeah, <laughs> super fun. Um, but we just cast vision and we remind people of our philosophy. You know, we're still wonder here. We are still doing the things that we set out to do. It just looks a little bit different right now. Well, and, and so you get at a really killer point in we're talking about the team, but then also about your, your clients. We, we drove, when this hit about two and a half weeks ago, and we realized people are going to really start physical distancing, we started, we drew a diagram and that was concentric circles of focus. And first and foremost was team and the inner circle. And then the next circle was current existing clients, like not even thinking about new clientele. Like, how do we just support current clients? And then after that was groups that we, you know, when you have a Facebook group in a normal market, you don't really feel like you're only pseudo committed. It's kind of like a funnel to people, you know, but to the, your point about community, when crisis hits, these actually become sources of, that people are, are trying to, wells people are trying to drink from. They're looking for real solutions. So we changed our view of our groups almost immediately and thought, no, we like these are people that even though they're not paying clientele, we're not trading them like a funnel. Like they're yeah. coming for resources. And then there was the broader market. So comms, communication yeah. became absolutely critical. Yeah. And people are looking for any means. Like you guys, I know you guys have been like, oh, I don't want to be in front of the camera. Jessica <laughs> specifically, like, no, do I have to do that? Can't Tiffany do that? She's more fun. You know, like, <laughs> um, but all of us are really being drawn into communicating at every avenue and yeah. things like state of the studio. I'm totally going to steal that. Like, <laughs> cause we already have state of the spark yeah. and like, we, oh, should, yeah. <laughs> really, oh, yeah. we should be doing an update and it's just, this is who we are and this is what we're up to. And I think that this is forcing people to get out of the commercial zone, but into the, yeah. out of marketing and into messaging. Yeah. And, and you're able to wave your flag because you guys have been, what I would consider frontline activists slash revolutionaries, but you know what I mean? Like you've been trying to change the face of, of what, how people think about education, I guess is what mm -hmm. it is. And this just, uh, people are paying attention. Right. And so you're just now, it's, I feel really happy for you, I guess is what I'm trying to express. Mm -hmm. I feel very happy that you guys have positioned yourselves the way you have. And as soon as this thing hit, even though it wasn't what you were expecting in terms of how to grow the business, you guys, I assume are ballooning in this other area without talking about numbers or details. Can I ask like what percentage has your curriculum grown in or your online distance learning materials? Like, like, could I ask roughly, like, how has that grown in terms of your income mix? You don't even have to tell me details. Oh yeah. But. I, we'd have to look at the numbers where, um, just, I know we, like, we've been tracking our online curriculum that sure. we've had forever, you know, and yeah. I can, I, I would probably say, um, of everything that we put online, we probably would get like one download a month, you know, sure. really slow moving. Yeah. But I, I, in the last two weeks, we've had probably over 50 downloads. Wow. Just two weeks of curriculum online. And those are all individual families or like That's distance like learning? Random people. I don't even know who they are. <laughs> <laughs> those are like people joining into our community like in just that way, like we may yeah. not have ever seen their face. They could be trying to be like, in like about something from Australia or something. Wow. I'm like, oh, get all the way over there. <laughs> like, well, and I know that you've talked about in the past. I think it's wild and free. Is that the thing you guys have uh, visited? Yeah. And and those are all shut down, right? And like those conferences. Those conferences, and I'm sure they're adjusting like you are. But I say that to say you're going to come out of this with a broader audience. And when it's okay to meet in person again, I think it's going to be that much more valuable mm. to meet in person and to, uh, and to grow. So I, I am hopeful about y'all's future. Um, so before we wrap up, is there any word of encouragement or resource that you would give to, I guess, distance learning parents and families or just any small business owner? Do you, either of you have any advice or any encouragement that you would share? I would say for small business owners, make your team a priority. Um, make sure, just like what you said, Grant, that they are that first circle, that they feel like they're part of the communication, part of the problem solving process. That's good. Um, I think the, it was timely because Grant, you had been telling us for forever to read the book Scaling Up and we kept putting it aside and putting it aside. And finally- We oh, tackled that book. We you did. What? Like we tackled it in, yes, in January, and then we had our leadership retreat, and we just really just went through it, the whole thing, and like even something as small, and like you've been telling us for so long to do those team huddles, and we're like, practically, how can we do this? And no, we've made it a priority, and I think it's strengthened our team, yeah. because it is hard to try and 
like strengthen a, not a weak team, but a team that is weak in communication in yeah. crisis, right? So if yeah. you find yourself in this crisis mode and you're like, my team is, is not feeling together, not cohesive, check in daily with them some way or another. Mm. But your team is everything. Yeah. Um, they're going through their own thing too. So just making sure that they feel encouraged. And Those support. huddles, man. Those yeah. huddles. And honestly, our team is, you know, our team is used to, to our morning huddles. We added, I don't know how long ago, maybe it was just last quarter. We added 430 check-ins and we literally, it's just a punch list, hot list. What did you do? What are open loops or what are questions you have that we really should close the loop on? And in a normal season, that was probably too much. Honestly, mm -hmm. it was wearing us thin. In the last two weeks, yeah. I think people are like, are we okay? Because out, out there, the news is changing things for us every minute, right? Yeah. And so right. in the afternoon, there's that touch point creating sense of security. Yeah. You know, and you don't want to create false security, but you do want to uh, dispel any fears or concerns that built up yeah. over the day, you know? So that's huge. I'm so glad to hear you guys have tackled scaling up, man. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> it's critical now, you know? Oh, gosh, yeah. <laughs> And, and it's the end of the quarter too. And like, I, I'm looking over here because if I could turn my camera, actually I can't here, hang on. Let me just turn my camera around. Let's see. Uh, there's Marissa. Hey. What's Hi, up? Marissa. Marissa is our, our Sparkify version of uh, the goal poster. Oh my gosh. Did you like blow it up and make it like a big poster? Yeah, we laminated awesome. it. And, right. That's awesome. And we're actually, we're creating, like we're working on improving on some of the scaling up systems and making our own Sparkified versions because we're finding, you know, we deal with a lot of companies like you guys and we have our own approach. And so I say it's Sparkified because we're adjusting some of the goal, the way goals are treated. But I say all that to say, it's your quarterly thing. So have you guys scheduled your quarterly uh, check-in thing? I have you worked we need to make sure we don't like lose those routines in the midst of all that. Yeah, man, I'm I encourage it. it. Do it. <laughs> do it. It, it, at least the monthlies, if you can do the monthlies, which are, which are smaller versions, mm -hmm. you know, like he calls for the quarterlies to be like two or three day off sites. You yeah. can't get into We're that right now. No, no, no. <laughs> but like, make sure you at least do a monthly version. And, and then, and like, I'm planning on uh, door dashing the team like food and like doing a little thing. So we'll That's check it out. Good. Well, I appreciate you. Where can we send people to check out your most important resources? Is it just the homepage, wonderhere.com? Yep, you can definitely go to the homepage. Um, and we have a tab that says at home. And the first thing you'll see is our coronavirus homebound support page. Wonderhere.com. Uh, and then it's, uh, you said it's, it's you, coronavirus. No, you said wonder, at home. You can just do wonderhere.com slash coronavirus dash support. Yeah. And there, that's where you'll find our free online courses on there. Okay. Um, our drop off enrichment classes we've got, um, yeah. and curriculum and everything. Yeah. Drop off. That means you dropping off to the house. Uh huh. We door dash it to you. <laughs> ah, curbside, <laughs> curbside distance <laughs> learning <laughs> material. <laughs> I'm happy for you girls, and I'm super. I'm I'm genuinely like I get goosebumps thinking about when you guys came to me and said we're not entrepreneurs. <laughs> if you haven't earned your merit badge already, oh, you yeah. earned it now, right? So I, I think you're doing great and I'm super happy to see you guys growing and going. Um, we're going to post these links in the comments below. Um, thank you so much for your time. We're going to wrap up here and everyone watching, please, if you know of a family, chances are you know of a family who's like at their wits end and not really sure where to go, wonderhere.com is the place to check out. I absolutely give the grant stamp of approval on what these girls are doing and how they're helping not just give people what they're used to and what they're expecting, but reframing education in general. So thank you again, girls. Have a great afternoon and thank thanks everyone for checking in. Thank you, Grant.